afternoon, internet. How the hell are we all doing today? Welcome into twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. My name is Graham D, and my OBS is all skewed in the wrong ways. Okay, yeah. spread. Nice. How are we all doing? Ha happy, happy Monday. Um, usually I'll be saying good morning. If you listen to this on demand, usually we're saying good morning because we timed, uh, we try, <laughs> well, not very effectively, but we try to go live at 10 a.m. ish each and every single weekday on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream upwards. Today it's 10 minutes past 12 in the UK, so a little bit late. A little bit late, but uh, welcome into twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name is Graham Day. This is the man that we call Bibi. We are ice cream uploads and in true ice creamy fashion. This is The Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast, even if we do say so ourselves. Anyway, we are here for an hour or so to bring you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories in the world of video games. And we'll give you our thoughts and impressions on those stories. We also want to hear your thoughts and impressions and your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. If you're in the chat, please do feel free to get involved because we turn this live stream. We do go live on Twitch. At 10 a.m. ish, each and every single ish. weekday on Twitch, but we turn this live stream into a podcast, a video that goes on YouTube and an audio podcast that goes on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play. There's lots of places where people can come back and listen and watch on demand. So please do get involved in the chat. You can do that on behalf of those people that get to watch on demand, but they don't get to give us your thoughts and impressions like you guys do. Before we do jump into the show, though, a couple of things that I'd like to mention. First off, if anybody is here that's a subscriber, uh, maybe you've thought, you know what, I've got, I've got a Twitch Prime uh, Prime Gaming sub that I've just got lying around. I might as well throw it at a channel. If you want to throw it at us, we would happily take that. But make sure that you type exclamation mark loot drop into the chat because subscribers do get prizes, or at least the potential to get prizes. Uh, we gave away one of those shirts. Not that one. That's my pub with G shirt. But that one, <laughs> that is the Ice Cream Applause Esports jersey. We gave away one of those last week um was it last week the, no we two weeks ago two weeks ago to chappers uh that has been this well not dispatched but ordered it's currently being produced uh so chappers will get his own personalized ice cream uploads esports jersey we will be giving a prize in a couple of weeks uh to one of the subscribers so if you're a sub make sure you're in the loot drop if not you're missing out on free things why do this um as well as that exclamation mark insert coin just to remind you guys that you can get some of the sexiest merchandise if not from our store exclamation mark merch then you can get it from the insert coin store and we do have a new discount code so if you want 20% off your order maybe you've used the old code well you can use the new one as well now so there you go fill your boots I see you uh, 21 is the code Mr. Bib yeah good weekend uh, it was actually yeah uh, didn't really do much this is the first time I've been in this room over the weekend because it's just too fucking hot uh, as of Friday, when I finished doing the uh, Assassin's Creed stream, just left the room. That was it. Never came back in again until today. And it's fucking red hot, which is why we've got the big fan there. Um, big fan of that. Yeah. So so a little dicky bird told me, though, that someone did a 15-hour-ish stream over two days this weekend, uh, which is criminal in this weather. I mean, I don't, don't want to brag, but uh, that was me. That was me. That was me. I did 15 hours of PUBG this weekend. It was, it was really good, though. Um, also, massive shout-out. So you, you guys are probably used to us talking about Muscle Moose, exclamation mark Muscle Moose. We still love the guys at Muscle Moose. Um, they are a local... Um, Local business, they do provide us with some goodies, as you can see, just above Bibby's head on the shelf there. There's a bunch of Muslim Moose cans, so massive shout out to the guys at Muslim Moose, but also a shout out to the guys at Wraith Energy Drink, because it takes some balls to reach out to another brand to give them a package, knowing that they already do bits of work with other uh, drinks, brands. Anyway, the guys at, at, at Wraith Energy Drink teamed up with the guys at PUBG Europe to create a PUBG care package, which is still down here on the floor next to me. I'm not going to open it up now. If you do want to see this, uh, you can go back through our previous broadcast on this, the weekend and you can see everything that was in that package. So shout out to the people at Wraith Energy Drink and at PUBG Europe for sending us some goodies. So that inspired me to play some PUBG. So I spent seven and a half hours on Friday and another seven and a half hours on the Saturday or Sunday, whatever it was, like yeah. Saturday, playing PUBG <laughs> on stream. Uh, so yeah, good weekend full of PUBG. Nice, nice. Also meant that I didn't uh, dissolve by going out into the sun. Not that I usually burn, but this 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 weekend it was it was another level. It was like just absolute heat. Uh, I did see I did see a comment on social media early on that made me chuckle, and it was something like, "Why is it when you're on holiday, thirty degrees temperatures are nothing, but when you're in the UK, you get anywhere near thirty degrees, and it's like being in certain's armpit." <laughs> yeah, it, it don't you don't need it. But... Nah. Luckily, I've got a little bit of shade in the back garden, so I spent most of the weekend watching the golf there, which is fantastic. I mean, we've finally got the back garden in a position where it's sittable because <laughs> it just used to be the flags all over the gaff. It's been decked now. The grass is fine. 
but yeah, it's 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 just too hot. Like, if, especially for me being a ging, like <laughs> eat, eat, anything over twelve degrees, and I'm combusting. Do you know what I mean? Being fat and ginger is just not the perfect temperature for us whatsoever. I was t- chatting with uh, Hamish on social media on Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember which, um, and he was like, it doesn't go out in the sun kind of thing because obviously it insta-burn. Um, and I was like, yeah, well, I'm that kind of person where I don't burn. I'm more like a, a, a mirror. I reflect onto other people and increase their tanning <laughs> potential. So I don't think me and you can go out in public. And he just sent back with that Thanos gif of him just t- turning to dust. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Hamish. Uh, but yeah, it. yeah, no, it's, it was ridiculous. Yesterday... Um, what, uh, no, Saturday when I was playing PUBG. So I've got a fan behind me here. You may, you, There may be more background noise in the streams today because, you know, health and safety, we need to make sure we don't die on stream. So we both have fans. Mm-hmm. Um, but on Saturday, I had two fans in this room, one down this side and one on that side, plus the window in front, trying to make a like a holy trinity of cool. It wasn't cool at all. It was ridiculous. I mean, I don't have the neon sign on. Not that that kicks off shitloads of heat anyway, but anything can help uh, in 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 this room uh, at the moment so we don't have the neon on today but uh what we do have is people in the chat stelio so pistachio stelio so pistachio welcome in says i got a genus uh, G- uh genus Sh- G- is it genshin, genshin. yeah the, the extra uh, yeah, e through me <laughs> genshin <laughs> impact ad uh fuck lolly games uh, well enjoy the genshin impact ads uh welcome welcome into the stream good morning dude mr gallic clark says morning shaggers enix yo uh gary says i didn't do any gaming it was far too hot yeah it was it was ridiculously hot it was just so hot outside that yeah mm-hmm. i i saturday i didn't even play golf this weekend usually this is perfect golf weather but it's just too hot what's the point 18 holes walking like three miles carrying your clubs not for me not for me at all you'd be like three and a half stone by the time you finish just just <laughs> sweat <laughs> uh yeah i wasn't i wasn't gonna stream on the saturday after the friday so friday we were gonna stream obviously because we've got the care package that we opened up on stream saturday i wasn't gonna stream but i sat in here with both fans on played a couple of games of PUBG, got a win off stream so i thought oh mm-hmm. feeling this gonna jump on stream uh didn't get a single win on the saturday <laughs> on stream mm-hmm. but it was fun anyway so we're joined yeah. by being shout out to shout out to beans tv for jumping on as well uh was out for 20 minutes and i'm burnt to a crisp says enix yikes get the get that factor 75 on or whatever factor 200 yeah. uh speaking of uh fun garden weekends mr the vernimator is in chat morning gents i'll read mm-hmm. your garden looked Sexy this weekend. It does. It nice. Looks so good. Nice. Nice. Hope you had a good Is it AstroTurf or grass that you've got there? Because I, I couldn't work it out. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing. We're, we're, we're potentially looking at AstroTurf because we can't be asked with, with cutting grass. And um, his if, if yours is, is not AstroTurf and it's grass, then you have literally, I'm, I, you are scissoring. Not like that. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> you are scissoring that grass because it was pristine, like the cut and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're talking about AstroTurfing because. Me and Danielle, neither of us are, are gardeners. It's just, it's just not as. It's is not that as. the perfect colour? Yeah, as, as the whole nation waits with bated breath to find out whether Vern. It wasn't sexy yesterday in the aftermath. <laughs> right. Okay. What's the, what's the way? After, uh, after, uh, aftermath? Is it after grass? Is it after, after turf? <laughs> anyway, anyway, while while Vern uh, sheds. The dirt. Let me tell you a little bit about what dirt we will be covering in today's news. Um, oh, whoop. That's Bibby's face. There we go. Nice. So first off, Ubisoft says it will reveal a brand new Tom Clancy game today. Uh, we'll give you the information on that. Following that, we'll jump into a story uh, that says LinkedIn page suggests Gears of War Studio, the coalition, is working on a new IP. New Gears game? New game from the people that made Gears? We'll give you the information that we have so far. Also, if you look at one of the Steam decks, maybe you got one last week. I don't know. Did, did, do we know anyone that managed to grab one? Uh, well, you can upgrade the SSDs in Steam decks, although Valve recommends that you don't do that. And then finally, we have an update on the story that we had last week, which was on a Ukrainian warehouse that was being used to um, what, what farm cryptocurrency. Oh, that's what we assumed last week. Turns out it's actually got a link to FIFA Ultimate Team. So we'll come back to that to close out the show. But as mentioned, the first story uh, is a Ubisoft-focused thing. Bib, Tom Clancy, man. Yes. Do you like a Tom Clancy game? Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't object to playing a Tom Clancy game. Um, I haven't played a, uh, a Splinter Cell game probably in about 13 years maybe even longer than that so uh i'm gonna say 
I, I, I mean, I've got eyes wide open. I'm interested. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, jumping in on that bombshell, uh, this cycle from Andy Robertson at VGC says, yeah, yeah, you'll be soft, says it will reveal a brand new Tom Clancy game on Monday. The planned reveal could be related to the cross-series FPS that leaked last month. So Ubisoft will reveal a brand new game set in the Tom Clancy's universe tomorrow, Monday, July the 19th. That's today it's announced. Uh, tune in at 8 p.m. CEST, which would, I believe, be 7 p.m. for us. You're just one hour ahead, right? I believe. Now I've said that, I'm not sure. I think it is. Anyway, uh, <laughs> tune in at 8 p.m. CEST uh, for the worldwide reveal of a brand new game in the Tom Clancy's universe, uh, the publisher said on Sunday. The game could potentially be the new multiplayer PvP title Called, uh, codenamed Battle Cat, which leaked on social media last month. VGC understands that Battle Cat is a first-person shooter targeting consoles and PC, which is currently in the early stages of development. On Sunday, publication IGN posted a short game uh, gameplay clip of the unannounced title. Um, I'm assuming that should be uh, an embedded video there, although it doesn't show up in ours. So if anyone... If you do, if if that is something that shows up in yours, can you drop the link in the chat, babe? Just so I yep. know. I will do. Um, so according to leaked marketing, uh, marketing documents, Battle Cat combines the Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and Division games into a single Tom Clancy multiplayer title. Recent leaked images show Splinter Cell's uh, Echelon as playable characters, as well as Breakpoint's Wolves and the Division Cleaners and Outcasts. Each character class has its own unique ability. The images claim, uh, such as Echelon's Radar Stealth and Wolves additional armor as well as an ultimate ability such as outcasts divine intervention which stops nearby allies dying for a limited time ubisoft previously combined its tom clancy properties with mobile game elite squad for a free-to-play rpg shooter release last year in which players assemble and upgrade heroes and villains from splinter cell ghost recon and more ubisoft recently said it's planned to release quote high quality free-to-play games across all our biggest franchises across all platforms although it later said this does not mean it will release less premium games games uh so let's stop there and, and click through to this link from ign um hit pause uh so the tweet says get a quick taste of brand new ubisoft game right here right now we had a chance to see what it looks like up close and we can't wait to tell you more keep an eye out on ubisoft tomorrow july the 19th at 11 15 a.m pt for the full reveal let's have a look at this video Interesting, interesting. So 25 seconds of gunplay. Uh, let me just take that off the screen. Pause, get out of here. Uh, have you seen the video, babe? I have. I've seen it yesterday. Um, obviously, this is this is being teased today. It was an article from last night. It's being teased today, so it's something to look forward to. But I imagine most people who are massively into a Tom Clancy Splinter Cell game are hugely pissed off with this, if this is what it's going to be. Like this is not in any way, shape, or form a Splinter Cell game. There is not one element of stealth in there. For me, it actually looks like a Valorant ripoff. It looks like they've smashed together Rainbow Six Siege, Valorant, and CS:GO all in one game. And this is like it may do well because the. I mean, I think Kirk McKean is he called Kirk McKean for the gamer? Yeah. He put he said something last night about if you was to put this alongside seven other different. Uh, first person shooter games you would not be able to tell the difference between all of these games nowadays because they all look exactly the same which I can agree with him to a large extent obviously depending on the, the area in which the game's set and the guns that they're being used that's the only difference this just looks like another clone of a different game this is not a Splinter Cell game there's no there's no stealth in this whatsoever <laughs> so uh, yeah I, I can't see this going down well I mean they will have an audience that this will go down well with but you can't put a Splinter Cell title on this game any or anywhere close to it. I mean, they've gone for Battle Cats, whatever the fuck that is. But <laughs> yeah, it it doesn't. I don't think it's going to do very well. Uh, so, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I'll put the trailer back on the screen as we uh, continue talking. I'll, I'll let it loop. It's only twenty five seconds, so I'll let the trailer loop a little bit. Actually, uh, I'll I'll put I'll I'll just put the tweet on rather than the full trailer. Uh, I'll leave that loop in there so you can see the tweet. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? 
see, I I don't mind the look of it in terms of let's forget everything else in terms of the cross uh the cross branding, the watering down of the Tom Clancy universe to kind of throw everything in. I I definitely got division vibes of that sort of like city center. It like was it was it the black zone that they call it in division? Um Dark Zone. Dark Zone, that's the one. Um so I've definitely got that sort of like um those sort of vibes. It does look very much war zone. So was it was it Modern Warfare that had like the Piccadilly Circus or Leicester Square or whatever sort, yeah. sort of maps. So so we got building uh, buildings in a street. You just got the American version of London. There you go. Ta da! Um, so I don't mind the look of that. It's boots on the ground. The bits that kind of trigger me though are like these walls. Like like he fired. He uses some sort of like wrist gauntlet kind of thing to fire a, a shield at the floor in front of him. Nah, I don't want shields. Don't, it's, uh, you've lost me now. You got me. You got my attention. Urban warfare, inner city, running round. Yes, shields and and stuff. I'm not so sure what I'm looking at anymore. Um, that, however, that's me thinking. This looks nice. I do like a uh, an urban warfare sort of shooter. I'll take that. But why? Why do we need? Why do we need to loop in Splinter Cell? Why do we need to loop in uh, Ghost mm-hmm. Recon or whatever other brands they're gonna build them in? Tom Clancy's universe is so so big um why do we need to cross over that is or is it not i don't don't know i don't know i'm I'm not i don't know what how i feel about this i like the idea of a modern another modern shooter uh because i don't feel like any one of them truly fits me entirely um obviously PUBG is the one that fits me the best um but Wall zones and things pacing is just super rapid. This looks like it's pretty quick, but it doesn't look like it's as pacey as that. But this just fucking shields. And blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I'm not sure where I fit. I need I need to I need to see probably the announcement that's coming later on tonight before I can fully commit to this. It looks yeah. okay. It looks okay, but it also looks kind of samey as well. Mm, it's it's just interesting that they've brought the, they've got this coming out alongside. Uh, an updated Rainbow Six Siege. What was the new Rainbow Six Siege called? Quarantine. So yeah, it was something along those lines. So this looks very similar to that. Like, are they gonna? Are they just gonna populate the video games market with clones of each other and try and take over that way? Because Rainbow Six Siege is still going frosty, yeah. strong after nearly eight years. Is Good it? afternoon, gents. It's ridiculous hash. how long it's gone on for. So I don't know. It's it's very odd. I mean, Rainbow Six Siege has been going for generations. I mean, Mr. T's in the chat. Good morning. And uh, is where did he put it? Rainbow Six Siege is ace. Do you know, when when I think of Rainbow Six Siege, I think of Mr. T. I mean, I think of Mr. T all the time anyway, let's just be yeah. honest. But but genuinely, I mean, I've never actually mentioned this to him. I remember some of the... Uh, because, like, obviously, you remember, the, you remember your first time. And the first times mm. I saw Rainbow Six Siege was Mr. T sharing clips. Um, I don't know. It, it, was it... PS3 or was it early PS4? Either way, he was playing games with some of his crew and it was like when you get your one one v four, you're on your own and you manage to turn it around and take out the full sort uh, full team. That was the first time I saw uh, siege footage, and then it kind of it kind of had its life and then it kind of disappeared and died, like video games do. But then it came back again and it just stayed. Then after that, so yeah, see, uh, 2015, December 2015, it wow. came out. So it was six years old. Yikes! I mean, it, and not even yikes. GGs. It's more of a GGs for an FPS game uh, to last that long. GGs. GGs. Yeah. Do, uh, you, do you reckon Siege is going to be talked about alongside the likes of CS:GO in like the next ten years? Because I can definitely see CS:GO still going after another ten years because that game will never die. But do you reckon it will be talked about as an esports like tactical FPS in the same breath? Um, maybe. Maybe, and that, the the reason I say maybe is it. I think it's it's kind of at the point where it's teetering. So um, Siege evolved over time. Uh, not Siege, uh, CS Go, obviously CS Source One Point Six and 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 the likes evolved over time. Some of them more successful than others in terms of their evolutions. Um, but I think that's kind of what it is. So CS, uh, okay, now Siege. Um, it's at the point where it's probably had 
at saturation. It may be dropping off again. I could be wrong. It could be uh, still riding a wave at, the, at this point in time. Oops, slack's on. Apologies, you'll get notifications. Um, so I could see it dropping off, but it depends on how they evolve. Uh, quarantine, I'm not sure, will be will be the kind of step mm -hmm. to, to evolve that game. I believe that's a different style of game, so it depends on how they evolve that. If they can evolve as uh, CS has, then yeah, 10 years' time I could see it. If it stays as it is, then I'm not so, so sure they will do it. Not to that level. Mm -hmm. Not that it hasn't done something exceptional and has survived longer than most people would have thought anyway, but yeah, not to that level. Let me just mute my uh, Slack notifications. Uh... Okay, from what you've seen, Bib, 25 seconds of footage, I know yeah. it's not a lot to go off. Would you play it? Uh, I'd have, absolutely. I mean, I'll give any game a go once. Um, it, whether or not that'd be for 10 minutes, three hours, three days. Uh, so, yeah, I'm absolutely open. I mean, it, try, I'm always trying to find something that's a little bit different because a lot of games nowadays are too much of the same. And that's very old man shouting at cloud statement. Um, but it's it, the doesn't seem to be an evolution in video games that just stick into a genre and then just staying within the same four walls. I'd like to see games do something different, but being the same at this moment in time is making people a lot of money. Yeah. So wh why would they want to go out of uh, a comfort zone, shall we speak, to potentially make more money and then not make it as much money? I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I like the look of it. I haven't really given it that much shit in terms of, like, yeah, I said it's, it, it looks the same as most other games, which, for me, that isn't a massive FPS buff that's played everything. It does. It genuinely does look the same. But from the, from the outside looking in, yeah, it does have a few things in there that may want to uh, uh, offer my services to, become, to be able to come and play that game. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll play any game once. I'll give it a go. If it keeps me interested, fine. If it doesn't, then it'll just go into the pile of the other FPS games that I haven't really paid, paid that much attention to. Um, just want to uh, shout out Gagad as well five minutes ago for the good afternoon, gents, and the 11-month streak on the subs. Appreciate that, Gagad. What a guy. What a guy. Look, look at how far we've come. Who would have thought 11 months it. ago Bibi would have done one golf stream and Gagad would be stuck here for life? Not me. <laughs> look at us. Look at us. <laughs> Yeah, look at us. nice. Thank you, thank you very much, Gagad. Uh, talk shows on mute. It says, have, have Ubisoft made an FPS with decent gunplay? None that I've played. And that kind of falls back into where my overall issue with this. Bibi said, yeah, you kind of fall within the four walls and then people don't like to break the walls. Stick within these four walls and we'll all just make the same money together. Not really do anything new. Um, and like FPSs have evolved significantly. Um Go back 20 years ago, we didn't have um, multiplayer. Well, we kind of did, but we didn't have online multiplayer. Obviously, that kind of boomed with the COD 4 sort of generation and then and then, then kind of stagnated. And then we got the Battle Royale generation, which is now kind of stagnating and stuff. But but there's all sorts of different ways to tweak that. Obviously, you can get straightforward multiplayer, you can uh, team deathmatch, then you can get the search and destroy sort of element. And, and there's these little intricate advances within it. Um, but... I can't put my finger on it. I'm happy for someone else to to enlighten me, but I can't put my finger on any time where Ubisoft have, um, what's the word? Uh, evolved. That's not the word I wanted. There's a different word, but they they haven't pushed the genre forward. They they they're riding the wave that other people are pushing forward, but they've never pushed the genre forward, which is why we get things like hyper scrap, uh, hyperscape came out. It's like, yeah, we're gonna do battle royale, and it's like. Okay, you're kind of doing the same stuff-ish with a little bit of verticality on rooftops and stuff. Yeah, you don't have a circle, but you've got like a weird sort of phasing out grid. Same, same-ish. Um, the only thing you did different was you put a crown that people had to fight for at the end of the, the game, which was possibly the worst part about the game. So Ubisoft are good at keeping up with trend, not necessarily changing the trend, which I'm, I'm happy enough. If they want to give you a solid game that's, that's wonderful and... Um, well weighted, well balanced. Arguably, CS:GO is not a brand new trend. It's, it's. I mean, it, it kind of is in terms of. I mean, unless somebody has got like not CS:GO, Siege. Mixing it up again. Mm. Siege mm. is is four v four, um, like like hardcore TDM ish sort of like search and destroy. That's what it is. Um, so it it was a. 
that creating and fortifying your bases and stuff was was a little bit different on it. So, but then again, like, whilst it wasn't pure invention of a genre, it was extreme polishing of a genre. And there's nothing bad about that either. You can take someone else's ideas and make it better. I mean, look what Fortnite did with, with Battle Royale. That's what mm -hmm. they did. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so do, I don't necessarily, off of, off of history, unless someone can give me uh, something to the contrary, I don't see this new Battle Cat um, game. Battle Cat obviously just being potentially the project name. Um, I don't see this giving us something new what i can see is it maybe not reinventing but slightly changing the way the reel rotates mm -hmm. so um yeah ubisoft has their own genre yeah. climb towers and unlock Especially the map if you're a ubisoft <laughs> <hand> game. Mm -hmm. sorry what were you saying if you are a fan of ubisoft games and this might be something that will interest you maybe not as tactically uh military as rainbow six siege or quarantine this is something a little bit more fast-paced and obviously Siege is quite fast paced, but it's hella tactical. This might not be, this might be just like Valorant where it's just an all got I mean, that's no disrespect to Valorant. It's again very, very tactical, but this just looks completely different from those two type of games. You know what I mean? It's very very fast paced. It's like a, it's like saying Battlefield and Call of Duty are the same game. Technically they are because they're a first person shooter, but if I, if anyone's played either of those games, you'll know how different they are. Like yeah. they are completely different. So it's hopefully it'll be it'll have its it'll have its niche audience. <laughs> niche. I'm already I'm already giving it shit. <laughs> <laughs> it'll have a it'll have a, a niche audience of people who will want to play this elsewhere. But if you are a fan of Ubisoft games, then it may be the ones for you. But I don't I don't think it's going to crack the market. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> The thing is, though, is like, is is the room for it? You look at like usually you'll get two brands that are competing for space in an area. If it is going after the Valorant space, Valorant and CS:GO are already at loggerheads, kind of thing. It so is there space for someone else to come in and do that? If if it is, then you kind of feel Ubisoft are uh, setting themselves up for a fall. There, it's it's like it's imagine another club setting up a team, a football team in Manchester now and trying to get involved like uh manchester derby lads lads i'm here it's like yeah all right mate nah you're all right no thanks we've, we've already got enough at the party yeah. uh so it just it just won't happen in that sort of sense so yeah i mean sounds super negative not meaning to be i'm genuinely quite excited uh, for this because um that that clean polished looking urban warfare stuff is something that ubisoft does exceptionally well and i've had some some long-term uh good times with tom clancy's games over the years early ghost recons all the way through uh to well, probably a, probably four or five years ago I, I stopped with tom tom clancy games at that point in time so so ubisoft tom clancy definitely history there that i would like to get involved in and obviously um Mr. T saying Yubi has their own genre, Clan Towers, and unlock the map. Hash, I know, sorry, but then he, he says, uh, um, although I think they've tried to move away from that, though, Valhalla is less that, Far Cry 2, but yeah, there is a uh, Yubi subgenre almost. I mean, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. They did get a lot of stick from their own investors on an investment call last year after Wildlands was done trashed they spent shitloads of money got dr disrespect doing stuff got it in wwe and all these other really cool crossovers are arguably cool really good marketing decisions but the game was just not good enough to, to go with those marketing decisions which you kind of feel for their marketers and their social media teams who created all these wonderful and creative projects to 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 share a game but the game just didn't inspire the the whole direction of the game from the original beat was the same same but new money for it. That's all it was. Oh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. What's different? It's like Call of Duty Infinite Advanced Super Imperial Modern Warfare. That phase in the middle where they all just became the same shit. That's that's kind of where um, Ubisoft games have been. So I don't want to be negative. I am genuinely quite looking forward to see what they come out with. Hope, hopefully it is something that has a bit of character. It isn't just another fps isn't just another ubisoft game it's something that, that is nice so yeah let's 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 see what it is let me jump back through the the, the comments um whilst i am jumping back through the comments uh, a poll has just been started is that what bibi was typing then yeah i, I kind of forgot to put the i in ubisoft so it's just ubsoft <laughs> <laughs> so would you play this new fps from ubsoft <laughs> uh yes no or do you need to see more if you need to see more letters in the word ubisoft then that's not what we're after uh we want to know do you need to see more information what, what are you saying what are you saying uh let's jump back through the comments then um 
What did we get to? It wasn't sexy. Oh, I've read that bit. All Astro lads, I can't keep a daffodil alive. Low maintenance gardens for the win. Nice one, Vern. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, get get mum to cut your grass. She did hours on Well Grove house front garden with scissors over four days. Uh, yep. Yep, that's true. Uh, but no, my garden's like three times the size of that. So shit, like 12 <laughs> days later. Um are moving into for shit. <laughs> uh, Mr. Gallic Clark says, this looks very Ubisoft. Yeah, I want a proper splint cell, not this cop out. Uh, more chance of Gallic Clark supporting Spurs than a new splint cell. This is proper Drake meme territory, though, with the top half of the meme being new splint cell and the bottom half, another FPS. I mean, it, that is kind of weird, though. It's like... There is such a big hype around Splinter Cell. It's 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 another one of those Pokemon game situations. Uh, it's, you have to feel Game Freak know how to make the perfect Pokemon game, but they know as soon as they make it, well, that, that's their cash cow's yeah. gone. Um, mm-hmm. So just milking it forever. Is that what Ubisoft are doing with with uh, Splinter Cell, or do they really not know what they have on their hands? I mean, surely they have. They've got mobile game crossovers. It's been potentially shoehorned into this as well so yeah it's bizarre it's bizarre i mean can you is it really splinter cell if you're running gunning shooting throwing shields out and and standing behind them while shooting in an open cross section of new york city kind of vibe is that splinter cell i mean for me it's not uh but but yeah Ooh, anyway um i used to be on siege daily with the crew great fun but we all kind of fell off it gunplay in general uh, gameplay was great though i mean that's the thing so ubisoft um there was a comment from, was it Talk Shows Unmuted said, uh, have they done a decent uh, game with gunplay? Yeah, I mean, uh, Siege is a decent game with gunplay in that sort of sense. Uh, but, but like, yeah, they've never really built on that kind of thing, which 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 is bizarre. Because if you look at, I mean, you look at games like, like PUBG, which is what I play. The reason I play PUBG is because of the gunplay. Oh, there we go. Votes are yeah. in. Uh, 75% of the votes say they would not play this new FPS based on what we've seen. Based on what we've seen. Obviously, keep an open mind. There will be more content coming tonight. So tomorrow we could have more footage for you that may sway you in a mm-hmm. different direction. Um, I would try it. But based on what I've seen, would I... Uh, Okay, let me ask, uh, I'll split that question. Would I play this game? Yes. Would I continue to play this game based off of that 25 seconds? Potentially not, because it doesn't look like there's anything different in there that has caught my attention. But that's just 25 seconds. It's just 25 seconds. Obviously, yeah. that's the caveat. Take it with a pinch. Um, Sup, suckers, says Chappers. How was your uh, your 24-hour hey. session over the weekend? How'd you get on? Um, I think I hosted you twice-ish. I can't quite remember now. I kept trying to jump in, but I was on stream for some of it as well. You should, you should have jumped into PUBG. We could have played PUBG for seven hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bethesda has their own type of genre as well. Broken. <laughs> whoopa, whoopa. Although everyone's forgotten that now. That's the thing. I mean, now that Microsoft, nobody, it's, it's yeah, Bethesda's not that anymore. Uh, didn't Forest Green try to do that Derby thing? But, Potentially. <laughs> um, Not too sure. Mr. T says Splinter Cell would do bits in the current market with no stealth game like that out there at the moment. Market opportunities would be immense. The three green night vision dots, so many things you could do on social and partnership wise headsets. I mean, absolutely. Uh, I mean, Call of Duty tried to take over that with the uh, the green sort of modern warfare thing and that sort of thing. That kind of, it was very yeah. close to Splinter Cell. Um, but even still, as soon as Splinter Cell drops that, then people go, oh, that's Splinter Cell again. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. It's 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 the cash cow. Just milk that baby. Uh, but we'll put a pin in that for now. So Ubisoft says it will reveal a new Tom Clancy game tomorrow, which is today. That was yesterday's news. So we'll give you information as that drops. Just a reminder that that will be being announced at 11 a.m. PT or 8 p.m. CEST. So I think that's 7 p.m. UK time. If anyone can confirm, if I've balls that up, please feel free to let me know. Um, but let's jump ahead into our next bit of news. Speaking of new games, it's not just Ubisoft. The Coalition, the guys behind uh, Gears of War, also have something up their sleeves. Don Peppy at VG247 says, LinkedIn page suggests Gears of War Studio, the Coalition, is working on a new IP. So the Coalition, uh, the game's... Uh, the Xbox game studio known for developing the modern Gears of War titles appears to be working on a new IP, a LinkedIn page has suggested. Excuse me one second. 
Burp. Full on burp off cam, yeah. Uh, the LinkedIn <laughs> profile uh, off mic, should I say? The LinkedIn profile of one of studios level of one of the studios level designers seems to reveal that the company has been working on an unannounced new IP for the last six months. The page was later edited and the listing removed. Unlucky. <laughs> uh, the LinkedIn page was initially spotted by Clobril, who has a good track record at picking game development stories up and posting them to Twitter. We already know that the coalition is working on, quote, multiple new projects, but seeing that one of these is in a new IP is an interesting development. Since the company was changed from Black Tusk Studios to its new name in 2015, the coalition has only worked on Gears-related titles, so it'll be interesting to see where the company heads next. Uh, in a blog post, uh, post published in May, the Microsoft developer announced that it is shifting its resources to next-gen development using Unreal Engine 5, and that it's not just making a direct sequel to Gears 5, but developing on UE5 for multiple new projects in the coming years. We've not seen much of what Unreal Engine 5 can offer just yet, but if the mouthwater and tech de demo that came out last year is anything to go by, we're going to get some very pretty games from the studio when it's ready to show what it's been cooking. Now the Microsoft nor the Coalition has formally announced any new projects at the time of asking. So there we go. Look, you can see the embedded tweet from Cobra that says, it looks like the Coalition could be working on a new IP alongside Gears of War if this LinkedIn description is accurate. This kind of was hinted at before uh, already as well. So image there the coalition studio one year level designer on new ip february 2021 to present uh that's six months uh based in vancouver nice new ip from the coalition uh is this to be expected about kind of they've kind of said that they will be bringing new things uh does this mean gears has been put on the back burner for now or we've seen i mean they did say they're working on multiple projects it has Gears had its time to shine and hasn't really done anything? Gears 5 was okay last year. Didn't necessarily set the world on fire, though. But is that because it was just Xbox's situation? Lots of things to consider, though. Uh, obviously, Xbox in a very, very better situation now. But, Bib, Coalition, yeah. new game. What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. How You know, in LinkedIn, right? I don't really use it. I just, it's usually, it's like fucking Facebook. It's just a pile of shit but obviously they're using it for this reason to try and hire new staff and things like that has there ever been an instance where they have said it's going to be a new thing but it's a smoke screen a smoke screen and it's actually something that they don't want to announce it like a brand new gears of war and they are just trying to bring people in through this like i'm assuming people will have to sign ndas before they even go into the interviews um for these positions but has this ever happened before? I mean, I know there's obviously people like yourself and Asim and maybe other people that have been in and around video games for a long time, but has this kind of smokescreen thing ever happened where, say, it's a new IP, but it's actually not? It's something that they just aren't ready to announce or don't want to announce yet, like a new Gears? Um, I believe so. Um, I, we, I mean, we've definitely seen similar sort of things in the Kojima world in terms of announcing different studios entirely to work on an existing ip uh obviously we got i always forget i always want to call it 1870 studios or whatever but the whole the whole pt situation around that and then there was some stuff uh with joaquin mogren for um was it moby dick studios for the metal gear solid 5 fan and pain sort of stuff so we've seen that sort of stuff done but for this it just seems very uh very breadcrumby in terms of mm these are super fine breadcrumbs to have one designer um not necessarily the studio itself um so one of the studio's level designers to put something to say that he's working on a new ip uh six months into um placement on that kind of thing i'm feeling this is just someone that's just gone update his is linkedin and not really thought that someone's going to come and scrape through so yeah i mean it it, it kind of kind of has been done but maybe not to that sort of breadcrumb level Hmm. I just think it's super interesting because obviously you don't people are well we, we've had many news articles over the years uh, of us doing this that we've tried to cover based off of someone scraping something from somewhere like they have literally gone to the very bottom of the barrel to try and get the smallest of breadcrumbs left and say could this be something 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 big and something something's worth different words to fill in games obviously i was just stuttering <laughs> um but yeah it's i don't know like they've not worked on anything other than gears according to this article 
I haven't done any research. I'm taking their words as facts. Feels a little bit smokescreen, in my opinion. What that means, I don't know. Yeah. See, I, I, I mean, it could be. It could be. Um, I feel it's probably just a case of, I mean, with them mentioning multiple new projects, I feel this is kind of, it's a weird smokescreen if that is the case in terms of it's very, very small. Follow the breadcrumbs. Uh, follow the white rabbit. Mm. Neo, see where it takes you. I, I kind of feel like this, is, this isn't this is a jump into the Matrix. This is just going, oh, shit. Uh, I've just pointed like there's an actual Matrix over there and I shouldn't have told you about it. Fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, I mean... I do like, I mean, GG's to Don Pepe and VG247 for not throwing the employee under the bus, by the way. You can see, if you hover over the, the link, that it goes to Pedro uh, Camacho Andrea. Uh, I don't know how that is split. I'm assuming it's something like that. So And, and Clobber links to the same account as well. I'm not going to click through it. But they've not just gone, this guy, and thrown him under the bus because... Or I say it, him. I'm assuming it's a him because of Pedro, but but it could it could be it could be a lady. Whatever. Um, but I, I like the fact that they've not thrown. They've just said that a level designer and 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 the individual part of it is irrelevant. But I think that's kind of what it is for me in terms of by keeping that individual away from it. It, it kind of it almost. It keeps him a, a little bit anonymous, which keeps him away from flack and stuff, which which I like. Um, but it also kind of conflates the issue potentially in terms of i think it is because like from that image level designer on new ip basically he's, he's gone from being a multiplayer level designer for the last six months um he's been working on new ip uh which is just him updating his linkedin to say that i'm doing new projects and i and and nobody's yeah. heard anything from the coalition maybe he's maybe he's looking for a new job in vancouver he's trying to force his way to into in, into ea so he's updated he's he's thinking yeah. maybe, maybe he needs a new job sometime soon now after this uh but yeah, I mean, the, it doesn't surprise me that the coalition are working on new IP. Um, maybe this could kick them into life if the, if people have got more um, more breadcrumbs and they know people are already hungry for information. Then maybe maybe the loaf they might have to start putting it in the oven and give us some 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 sort of information now. Uh, Mr. T says, big fan of Gears main series, enjoyed Gears 5 as well. That said, time to leave it slowly cooking in the oven for a while. Would like to see that team work on something new, especially with their expertise in Unreal Engine. No, I think I think that's that's a big point as well. Is Unreal Engine 5 is potentially a game changer. Obviously, we're judging off of um promises by the developers of said engine so naturally they're going to promise the earth because that's what they want it to deliver um but if it does then it will be wonderfully exciting and um these guys have a history of working with unreal uh so if they can if they can utilize that and push us forward like they did with the very first gears of war game then, yeah, I don't mind them taking time to work on multiple projects. So if they have level designers working on new environments, utilizing Lumen and Nanite, which are mm. uh, two benefits of Unreal Engine 5, then, then yeah, uh, that's fine. Keep keep the breadcrumbs coming. Uh, just just give us some, some decent news soon, and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, job descriptions are sometimes used by comms slash PR to get the word out about new games IPs out there on the download. It helps boost share price and the like. Mainly, though, it allows for additional secret external conversations. Maybe it is. Maybe it is all smoke and mirrors. Do you know, if we do get any more information, we'll let you know. Gary says they'd be unreal working on that engine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody ban him. Ban him. Gary, you've got a sword yeah. of power. Ban yourself. Get out of here. No. Nice, nice. Um, but yes, the Coalition, the developers of Gears of War series, are working on a new IP. So we had Gears of... Uh, well, Gears 5 last year, year before. Um, maybe they're working on another one, but for now they are also working on new IP, according to the posting on LinkedIn from one uh, member of staff. It could be the case that he's just said something he shouldn't have done. It could be the case that there's, there's, it's a little bit more than meets the eye. When we get more information, we will keep you up to date, just like we're going to do now on the Steam Deck. Nope, that's not an Elgato product, even though I absolutely think it should be with a name like that. I'm going to start, I'm going to rewind a second. I mentioned this, so when I was on stream... On did I stream on Thursday? PUBG? I did. I streamed PUBG on Thursday and then I didn't jump on the scoop on Friday. And this this was announced on Thursday. Um and Jordan jumped in to the stream and I mentioned it. I don't know if he's here now, because he mentioned it again on on uh, or he was in the stream on the on the Friday. And I just think they've absolutely 
dropped the ball. They've 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 absolutely not dropped the ball. The Steam Deck is um, Valve's Switch killer potentially. Um, I don't tend to like that because the Steam Deck and the Switch can exist in the same world wonderfully, just like the PS4 and the Xbox can. Um, but this is a portable PC, and it, it it's exactly something that has my attention. Genuinely interested in this more than I ever would be in a Switch. But they've called it the Steam Deck when something yeah. that PC users exists on the market that's very very uh, social called the Stream Deck. It's it's such a stupid decision. It's like calling the Xbox One X. Why would you do that and then conflate that by calling the next one the Series X? Uh, and they both come in a box, the Xbox, one Xbox, blue screen, blue screen, blue screen. And that's kind of what this has done. You can, I mentioned on the Friday, imagine how many kids are going to be sat there without a PC going, oh, I'm going to get a portable PC for Christmas. I am gonna fi- I'm finally going to get a PC so that I can play all these PC games that I want. And then they open it up and there's an Elgato Stream Deck. Whilst that is a wonderful present, imagine how good I don't have a PC. I literally can't use this thing. So, yeah, poor, yeah. poor little Billy's going to be sat there at Christmas with, with, his, with his Steam Deck. But do you know what? There was a point over the weekend that if you sat in Steam Deck, you'd just bring up Stream Decks on Google. It's it's foolish. It's so so foolish. But you know what? We'll we'll put a pin in that. If you don't know what it is, the Steam Deck is Valve's handheld PC. That's basically what it is. Wonderful words when you put that together. Um, there was issues with it though. One of my biggest issues, which was shared by Mister T, he, he mentioned it as well in the chat, is the fact that the SSD um, can't be upgraded. Slash the memory is too small and other bits like that. But it turns out the SSD can be upgraded. Uh, so let's jump into this article by Jonathan Balding at PC Gamer. It says you might be able to upgrade a Steam Deck's SSD, but Valve says not to. So the socketed memory module is not intended for end user replacement. Uh, since it's just a PC using pretty normal PC parts, there's been some people brewing ideas already for hardware hacking on Valve's upcoming handheld PC, the Steam Deck. Uh, Valve has been pretty straightforward that the hardware, for all its fancy case and control scheme, is just a portable PC inside. Gabe Newell even said that you could put Windows on it and even other game storefronts if you'd like. A Reddit user emailed Gabe Newell with a follow-up question asking if the Steam Deck will have a replaceable SSD, allowing users to upgrade the machine storage. After all, from a technical standpoint, the only big difference between the three Steam Deck models available for pre-order right now is storage capacity. Newell replied that the Steam Deck SSD was connected with a 2230M2 uh, slot, meaning it's not soldered to the main board or otherwise connected in some extremely permanent way. Notably, the Steam Deck website later, uh, was later updated to say that all models use socketed 2230M2 models not intended for user replacement. That does mean that, at least theoretically, you could manually upgrade the storage in the Steam Deck, but Valve doesn't think it's a good idea for you to try it. That probably means you'll have to significantly disassemble the deck to access that M2 slot, likely in a way that voids your warranty on the whole thing. That makes it seem like the theoretical upgrade will only be for hardcore ha- uh, hardware hackers and computer assembly professionals. You can go check out Tom's Hardware or Tech Radar for a bit more theorizing about breaking out the screwdrivers and soldering irons to go on the upgrade path. Valve has remarkably uh, has been remarkably forthcoming about the hardware and internals of the steam deck especially compared to most games console manufacturers they all uh, also think they've avoided the thumbstick drift problem uh the steam deck has been a topic of a lot of discussion around the pc gaming campfire with dissenting opinions flying left and right do you know what? We'll stop there. We'll stop there. We don't need to go into that too much. Uh, so Jonathan Bolden at PC Gamer has the article that says, you might be able to upgrade upgrade the Steam Deck's SSD, but Valve says you shouldn't. It's not for the end user replacement. Bib, what are your thoughts? I can't... Uh, I just want to say, I can't see it being that difficult. And it is definitely a viable option, but uh, at what point does it not become a viable option? Would it just be better to upgrade, uh, buy the, the top tier one or the middle tier one rather than the lower one and then get in a ter- and get in a terabyte SSD to put in later on? I, I don't know how easy it is because we haven't even seen what the insides look like yet. But if, you've, if there's an opportunity to be able to do it, it will be done. Someone will do this. And at what point, does it 
if you're only saving twenty pound, is it worth it? Is it worth potentially voiding the uh, warranty on the console? Is it worth digging deep into the console and potentially fucking it up for the sake of twenty pound? It depends on the SSD size, I imagine, because if you're looking for something that's above two five six, then yeah, it probably is worth it. But if it's not, I don't know. Like. I don't know how what the actual price of an SSD is nowadays, whether or not it's as expensive as they used to be, especially for something that will need to be quite small to be able to go into this product anyway. But would you would you rip it open? Would you open? I mean, I don't. I've never even cracked open a PS Vita. I've never cracked open a PSP. I've never done any of this kind of soft modding uh, or upgrading, shall we say, for this. I would not. So I did. Yeah, not I, in a I don't years. think I would either. I would destroy it. I mean, the closest I've got is to. Um, changing sticks on a ps4 controller which then just uh, was always rattly the buttons were never quite as rigid as they were before so yeah this nah, not in a million years i opened up my ps4 pro took off the lid so i can suck out all of the gubbins and crap inside to hopefully stop it turning into a ball of flames when i play PUBG mm. and throw a smoke grenade um took off the lid there was no dust so i needed to take it apart and put some more thermal paste um uh, in the places where thermal paste goes. And, and yeah, no, no. You had to do like 20, 30 screws or whatever. I was like, fuck this shit, I'm out. I'll just, yeah. you, I'll just use smoke grenades for the next six months until the PS5 comes along. Then we'll do that instead. <laughs> uh, and that's the kind of way I would go. So I would not do this. The fact that you can replace it sounds okay um, in terms of, okay, you've got an M2 stick. You, It's kind of like a PCI card in terms of you go boop, just plug it in i'd imagine that's how it's kind of working um but i'm not sure i'm not i'm i'm not sure that's that's very simple is it the fact that it's not intended for end user replacement okay i can take my ssd out uh, ssd out of this pc pretty easily um just take off a screw and then just pop it out jobs are good and if i was to uh do that in a console it might not be uh, a handheld console something this size it might not work that easily there might be other components that are in place that would need to be brib uh brib uh, that would need to be taken off the motherboard so that could be things that are soldered on that need to be removed to allow you to then take that off it could be that point so um knew the thermal paste story was coming well there you go there you go um i mean that's it thermal pasting uh components is already a, something i don't want to be doing um because i don't want to fuck things up so changing my ssd in this i mean i changed i've changed my i changed my hard drive in my ps4 i changed my hard drive in my ps3 okay that's 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 fine um but but changing my ssd in this just sounds like it's going to be a bit more complex the fact that everything's just squashed into such a small space i wouldn't be surprised if the ssd backs up against the the gubbins for the one of the sticks or some of the buttons or the battery pack or whatever so to get it you have to remove that element to be able to slide it out yeah. so yeah um I'd, I'd just buy the better one i'd just spend the extra money on the b bigger ssd and, and hope that was enough i think that that, that would be it for me <laughs> do you think 256 is big enough for this uh not really because i mean how big games can be um i mean is 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 I can't, I didn't, I missed you going through the breakdown of it the day after, so I've still not fully gone through with it. Um, so you've got the SSD. Is there any form of HDD or is it just SSD storage? Uh, SD. S oh, okay. Um, Micro SD. Yeah, so you can probably get, you can, well, we did. I, I brought it up on the screen when we was doing the scoop last week. You could buy a one terabyte SD card for about 179 quid, which is obviously an external slot, so you can just pop it in, pop it out, whenever you want. And can you transfer so games from, like, SSD to SD on system? Well, it's you can. It's a Windows system, in it? So I'm fairly certain... Well, it's not. It's, a, it's, a, it's open source, so you can install whatever you want on it. But uh, I heard that the base is uh, Steam OS built on Linux, so I imagine you can install a piece of software that you can then do that. So, I mean... <laughs> Two five six is pretty. It's, it, I imagine is that enough to play any game? Is there any game that's over two five six? Um, but you probably you probably <laughs> uh, you probably it's have to you probably have to pick and choose. So if you were playing Warzone and you wanted to run it off the SSD rather than the SD, um, you'd probably have to move stuff backwards and forwards. Which I mean, I'd probably be okay with that in terms of this would then be my alternate. If this was your main PC, I could see that being a little bit frustrating. In terms of, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, at the moment, I'm only playing PUBG, new season and all. Yeah, but 
a couple of weeks back, I was flicking between PUBG, um, oh, what's it called? Dodgeball, um, Knockout City, Knockout uh, City. finishing Spider Man, uh, Miles Morales, and I had something else on the go. Oh, I was on. I was playing, uh, jumping in Warzone. Uh, so, so yeah, there's no way I'm doing all of that. I'd, I'd have to like move stuff backwards and forwards, which is just a little bit frustrating. So, I mean, for me, 500 gig uh, uh, is what consoles have and is not enough. So, this is a PC, which arguably can be much, much bigger. I kind of feel like it should have more, but. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to say with that. I feel my my gut instinct is two hundred fifty six gig SSD is not enough. Yeah, well, I mean that the SD the S the SSD in the new consoles S- obviously games SD, are taking. By the way, yeah, <laughs> they're making the use of the new gubbins inside of the console. Whereas if you're going to be playing games off an SD card on this, you can't play them on Ultra anyway. So I don't think you're going to be getting all that new new gen shit. So you're going to be playing them on medium or high. So Fair enough, the games might not load as fast, but the, the games won't require the amount of power that gets in a new-gen console for this. You will not be playing new-gen consoles on this, especially not on what they're intended for. So playing off an SD card for me would not be a problem anyway. As long as I've got the memory to be able to have the games there and it's a portable gaming device, the, again, graphics not asked. As long as the game plays good and it works, and the game I can play, I can play at 30 or 60, depending on what I want and things like that, that's fine. But playing them off the SD card is absolutely no, no problems. I'll probably pick some of the, the 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 bigger, better games to go on the SD card, but I play it. Graham, we both know. I play a lot of shit. Those <laughs> shit games can go into the SD card. Absolutely no problems. As long as I can play them, that's all I'm asked about. Yeah, I think that's... I mean, that's kind of like a... How long's it been stringing it? I mean, the, the chances are the SD card's probably going to run just fine. Uh, but until we get our hands on it, we, we just have to assume that is the case. It may be a case of... Uh, there could be all sorts of issue with popping if it's just mm. like it doesn't have the processing power, doesn't have the RAM, and 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 it's trying to act, act, do data calls, and the SD is just taking a bit longer, and and so on. So, but then that, then it then it becomes of you're working within your your limits. There's there's all sorts of limits on the switch uh, in terms of like playing a game on a switch versus playing a game elsewhere. This is arguably going to look and play better than the switch. It, it, across the board so if it's just a case of things popping not as much then okay well maybe you play your, your single player games off your ssd and you play multiplayer games or things that you're super competitive where every second counts then that's on your ssd not your sd and and so on but but yeah i i'm intrigued to see where this goes i mean david does say linus tech tips said on their uh one show uh, that they might try upgrade it when they get there so there you go when linus tech tips get it if they upgrade it and it's all jobs are good we'll, we'll let you know how that goes on so you know i mean for now uh I don't know anyone that's getting this, so we'll just have to... Uh, not personally, anyway. Um, so we'll just have to sit off the back of uh, content size like that. There's a phone somewhere in the house. Nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll keep you updated. Uh, Gagad's lurking. How dare you? Go enjoy your sandwich. I'm assuming you're eating a sandwich. Um, I did upgrade the hard drive in my PS4 Pro, but that's about it. Um, I'll wait until there's a step-by-step idiot-proof guide before I even think about doing it with man. Oh, have you, have you purchased one of these, or are you going to purchase one of these mr t because if you are then i think asked him did did it nice, nice. i can I, I single-handedly convinced him i'm not taking i'm not letting him have any kind of uh his own mind over this he didn't convince himself it was it was our show on friday that i convinced him that this is worth picking up gg babe um by the way if you want to get yourself a steam deck use code uh hashtag bibby is a legend uh, <laughs> and then you will get yourself no percent off uh, of final purchases so feel free to to get the benefit of no extra percent off nice 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 bibby did have an impact agree um uh, it's also going to be able to do cloud gaming and local game streaming like nvidia shield nice i mean i'm 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 not going to rush into one it's definitely i, I will be, probably get an xbox before i get um uh, a steam deck or maybe even get an extra pc before i get a steam deck but i definitely want one i definitely want one uh yeah i did too well that's it for that for now we'll jump into our final story and you may remember the other day we had a conversation about a factory in the ukraine that had 3800 ps4 pros ish on shelves all farming cryptocurrency the only reason people found out about it is because it had used 257,000 
dollars worth of electricity. Um, well, we have an update on that. Apparently, it wasn't just any old cryptocurrency uh, that they found. It was actually something to do with FIFA Ultimate Team. So let's jump into the article. This is from Wes Pool at Eurogamer, and it says... Ukraine warehouse packed with thousands of PS4s was actually a FIFA Ultimate Team bot farm. Fluid formation. Nice. That's a pez term, by the way. Where's, <laughs> where's there? God, mate, mate. Um, so a giant cryptocurrency farm in Ukraine that contained thousands of PlayStation 4 consoles was actually a FIFA bot farm. Last week, the security service of Ukraine, the SBU, announced it had shut down what was reported as a cryptocurrency mining farm that contained an incredible 3,800 game consoles. Images showed racks of PS4 slims. Some claimed the, uh, claimed the shows, uh, photos showed PS4 Pros. Either way, not the ideal hardware for a cryptocurrency farm farm it turns out the ps4s were being used to grind fifa ultimate team according to an investigation by ukraine business uh, newspaper delo sparked by skepticism of the official claim about the farm being primarily about mining cryptocurrency as well as the fact that game discs can be seen protruding from ps4s in one of the pictures what we're looking at in the photos is a bot farm that got stuck into the ultimate team grind with the goal of selling accounts loaded up with in-game currency on the black market uh, delo said the security service of ukraine has so far refused to comment on the revelation, citing the secrecy of the investigation, but the uh, suggestion is these PS4 Slims, all controlled by PCs running bots, farmed Ultimate Team for profit. Ultimate Team is the perfect game for this kind of operation, given how it's structured. You can spend real-world mon uh, money on loot boxes in the hope of obtaining high-value cards, but the odds of getting one of the best players is soul-destroyingly slim. Or you can play the game for months on end in a bid to save up enough of the in-game currency to splash out on the auction house. Or you can buy foot coins on the black market. Expect 40,000 foot coins to cost you a couple of quid. To put that into context, Lionel Messi's 98 rated Summer Stars card currently costs around 1.5 million foot coins on the PlayStation auction house. EA Sports battle against third party foot coin sellers is long running and well documented. As I reported in 2017, there are a huge number of websites that let you buy foot packs and coins and sell your coins and even accounts. The FIFA Ultimate Team black market is huge despite EA's attempt to combat it over the years. EA warns players against buying or selling foot coins saying it could result in a ban. Uh, the SBU also said it found more than 500 video cards, 50 processors, draft documentation on electricity consumption accounting as well as notebooks phones and flash drives in the warehouse with all that cryptocurrency mining may well have been going on but it's clear now the primary purpose of the warehouse was to grind ultimate team Whew, there you go no matter how much ultimate team that you've played let let it be known that a warehouse in the ukraine has grinded it better than you nice <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Mad, it? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How bizarre is it that we live in a world? I mean, it's not bizarre. It's pretty straightforward when you actually go through the steps. But but think of it, forget everything you know about the industry. How bizarre is it in a world that when you were a kid, you were playing on your SNES, your Master System, Mega Drive, Atari, whatever you were playing as, as a kid. Um, and your mum and dad were like, yeah, you're never going to get a job in video games. Get a proper job down the pit or whatever replaced with a job that sounds more job worthy and now you don't even need to get a job what you need is just a couple of ps4s some fifa copies and that's it you can just grind your way to a to a future doing that way it's bizarre that video games are so influential it's not bizarre it's wonderful but but also bizarre and a little bit well a lot negative as well that games are so influential that entire industries can be built off the back of just getting machines to play the games for people it's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. But this is the world in which we live. Yeah. Uh, and on that bombshell, we're going to wrap things up. Unless you've got anything else that you want to add about a Ukraine warehouse packed with thousands of PS4s was actually a FIFA Ultimate Team bot farm bit. <laughs> no, not really. No, it's, again, it's just... The, the coin selling things are big going on for so long now. We've got a, we've got a look in behind the door of how this has actually happened. Because to be fair, I have always wondered who... It, is it just one person behind these accounts that sits there and just creates codes to buy and sell players if they're on the low and then because they know they're coming back high again it's yeah it's just like selling stocks so yeah i've always wondered and now i know that there's a warehouse somewhere with about four hundred thousand playstation slims <laughs> just doing all the grinding for you i mean let's it kind of does bring it into perspective when playstation have sold 120 million consoles now we know why <laughs> <laughs> Why, why, why is it selling so well in Russia, but there's nobody playing it in Russia? <laughs> oh, oh, that's <laughs> right. Ugh. But uh, yeah, no, it is interesting. It's interesting because I've I've always assumed it was it was like 
I don't know, some PCs somewhere, some mega PCs. Mm. Never in my mind did I expect to see, like, the Matrix where you see rows and rows of people feeding the system. I mean, this pretty much, it's the it's the, the FIFA Matrix. Rather than Neo as a battery yeah. that feeds the system, the ex, uh, the PlayStations are the battery that feeding the system. Would not <laughs> I would not have expected it to be that sort of physical setup, but there you go. Uh, but you know what? I would not have expected to be finishing the show here, but I am. So there you go. Thank you very much for everyone for joining us for another week of The Scoop. This will kick things off. Obviously, we do go live on Twitch at 10 a.m.-ish. Each and every single week. Yeah, big today it's uh we started just as it hit 12 noon today so yeah big ish um we do go live on twitch at 10 a.m ish each and every single weekday bringing you the scoop this is only the first of the week we do have four more coming from tomorrow at 10 a.m um after the scoop today though i am busy are you playing any video games babe or are you going out into the sun to dissolve what, what you doing i'm going finding the shadiest part of this house and going to go and cry myself <laughs> to sleep in there uh so there will be nothing from this bedroom today it says it's 26 degrees in hide Lies. right now and i can guarantee that this room is fucking way hotter than that <laughs> so there, there is absolutely no way i am playing video games in this room today nice well do you know what go play video games yourself if you've got somewhere nice and cool and shared if not grab yourself a glass of water and just just enjoy the world if you're going out into the sun stay hydrated yeah right Absolutely. okay uh so we'll be back at 10 a.m ish tomorrow with the next episode of the scoop reminder there's only the scoop tomorrow too so we're going to drop a raid on someone else right now we'll find someone to drop a raid and make sure you stick around for that raid because you get extra channel points uh, for doing that which you can spend on our channel plus you get to make their day every time you drop in on someone's raid it's, it's wonderful it's wonderful before that though mr bib is there anything else that you'd like to add yeah again thank you very much to each and every one of you that have joined us for today's show as graham said it's the first one of the week we've got four more so if you do want to help shape those shows then please feel free to get in contact with us first of all you can find us on social media at ice cream us across all major social media platforms secondly get involved with our discord if you are watching this at any of our on-demand services which include youtube spotify soundcloud and google play in the description below you'll be able to find out uh, the links to the socials as well as to our Discord. All we need from you is a URL plus your false impressions. We will then give you our false impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day. Well, that will be... At 10 a.m. 10 a.m. ish, uh, ish, 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 definitive uh, lump on the ish. We'll be back 10 a.m. ish tomorrow with the next episode of The Scoop. Have yourselves a little bit there. Don't get sunburned. Stay hydrated. Yeah. But above all else, remember to stay frosty. Stay frosty. Didn't have the button ready. Stay frosty again. <laughs> <laughs>